At the DTI, we work with unconventional production methods. We produce uh, nanomaterials and we uh, utilize green chemicals like water and sugar for our production methods. These methods give us the possibility to create completely new structures, completely new nanoband materials, which have very useful applications within uh, areas such as catalysis, print electronics and magnetic materials. Our methods, it's all about control. We want to gain control of our parameters during the production, and these parameters and this control can then be transferred to the control of the nanoparticle properties. So we kind of build up the particle from the bottom, atom by atom, like playing with Lego, and in the end we end up with a, a complete nanoparticle with properties that we would like. This is a very exciting field for us to work with, because we get a chance to, to develop new methods for the industry, we get a chance to uh, to develop new materials which can be used in completely new areas. We get a chance to make more sustainable materials and, and also create new areas within the industry that can utilize these materials. For magnetic materials, it's crucial to have nanoparticles to have the best properties. And therefore, to produce nanoparticles, it's really difficult with the conventional methods. So therefore, we need to have some unconventional methods where we can actually design the size and the shapes of the magnetic nanoparticles in order to produce the best possible properties. What we are doing is mainly to try to develop new methods to be able to actually scale up these nanosynthesis. So one of the big problems that has been for the past 10 years is basically getting enough nanopowders to produce actual magnets. So we are trying to develop methods that then can go to the industry and they can then scale up and make it on a production scale where it can then actually go into a product. We are using uh, supercritical water so the idea is that when you use supercritical water, water is in a different state. So it basically changes from being a polar solvent to being a non-polar solvent. And this process, if you have ionic species dissolved in the water, they can no longer be dissolved, they have to crystallize. And as they crystallize, and we do this in a very rapid process, we can control the size and the shape of the nanoparticles we produce using this method. We work through many public funded projects. Uh, we work with academia, such as Aarhus University, but we also work with industry. We see that we have the perfect place here in between academia and industry, and we have the ability and capability to, to transfer some of these methods that we develop to the industry. Working with nanomaterials uh, creates new enhanced properties that we can utilize, for example, within catalysis. Creating very uh, small particles will create large surface areas and we can enhance the catalytic activities in this way also by utilizing new materials. In that way we can save materials, which in the end can save money for the industry. But we can also utilize small uh, nanomaterials within, for example, print electronics. The reason there is a need for unconventional production technologies is that actually there is not that many production technologies for nanomaterials for printed electronics. What we're trying to do is making nanomaterials, nanoparticles uh, using batch chemistry processes and also scaling that process up to, to industrial scale, showing industry that it, it can be done, it can also be done cost efficiently. Uh, usually starting on a, on a small scale for development and that could be for uh, nano copper, which is a very nice conductive material uh, for electronics. And then what we do in the end is we build a reactor which is automated and scaled up to a very large production volume. Uh, in this case we go, can go up to 20 kilos per batch. After that we reduce the nanoparticles, we clean them and then we can formulate them into an ink which is then printed onto flexible uh, substrates like paper or plastic and then we can mount, mount components and then we, we deliver a, a device. Most of our nanomaterials we work with is used in a wet form so we use it in kind of a slurry or ink or a paint. When we do for example fuel cells or print electronics we work in ink formulating for coating and printing. The exciting part about using the supercritical reactors is that we have very a high control of the particles, meaning that we can control the particle size, uh, the shape or other types of pro properties, which uh, is ideal for when you're making cal catalytic materials, because then you can improve the performance of that material. Like we did in the fuel cell case, where we produce very small, well-distributed platinum cobalt particles on a carbon support material, and that improves the performance by a factor of five compared to the commercial platinum catalyst used for this application.
Danish Technological Institute is the best place to develop nanoparticles because we kind of have the full package. We have the reactors to develop and produce the nanoparticles. We also have a lot of knowledge from our collaborations with different universities, especially Aarhus University. But we can also bring forth our knowledge that we base this on to an industrial scale meaning that we can put it in the hands of the companies we collaborate with. with. But we also, in addition, have a broad range of equipment that can characterize our product fast and therefore treat the product properties for the customer's requirements. Our future vision for working with these unconventional production methods is to see these methods utilized in the industry, both Danish industry but also European industry. And the goal is really to see this being pushed to the industry and we can see these unconventional methods being conventional in the future.